top five wide receivers or the top receivers, however you want to look at it, in the 2023 NFL draft. And after getting into some tape, man, I was um I was pretty impressed with how my rankings jumped around. And um I think we're gonna I think people might not necessarily agree. That's what we make lists for, though, right? But I think people might be shocked at where I place some of these guys. The top five, I, I feel like, is you know just about the same for everybody. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump into it, JT. We'll go from five to one. Save the best for last. Give me your number five wide receiver coming All up right. in this NFL number, draft. Number five for me, uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for it, but it's uh, it's Kayshawn Booty from LSU, man. I, I don't I don't know what happened last year. I think the whole team suffered, but. You yeah. turn on that tape a couple years ago, you can see like he has special ability. And I think out of all the wide receivers that don't go round one, he could be an alpha if it all works out. So I think the talent is there. Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about him too. And we know, you know, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. We even had Terrace Marshall in the midst of those two's got two guys in LSU as well. So so now I'm not going to be mad about that at all. LSU's been able to put some awesome receivers into the league. Um, and he's definitely been getting some talk about him as well. At number five, and I, I we're going to start it off crazy. Hell, you went with Kayshawn in the top five. I didn't even have him there. Good receiver, though. Number five for me is going to be Quentin Johnston. As I know, he's huge, 6'3", 208 pounds, ran a 4'5", too. And, and you look at it, this is really your DK Metcalf, you know, deep threat, big body receiver in the NFL draft. You give him a gap and he can take it to the house. His size means that he's going to be a good big blocking upside receiver in this league as well. He's got good speed, good acceleration, but realistically, I, I think that's about it. Like, yes, he can go up and high point the football, but when you've got some of the smaller receivers in this draft, like a Zay Flowers that can play big, even though they're under five foot ten and using their hands as well, when you see the competition he's up against and you look at how his skill set is not as diverse as the rest of the guys in this draft, he's going to have to land with a team that coaches him up. He is going to be that big play receiver, that deep threat guy, but it feels like he's kind of like a one-trick pony. I mean, you take away his speed and his acceleration, and you match him up with a shifty DB, someone that's going to be able to jam him at the line, and feels like he could disappear for a good parts of games. He's not really going to be that big technician with the footwork, with the routes. I feel like his route tree is a little limited as well, kind of loose with his technique as a receiver. And, and I know it sounds like I'm I'm going down the list on Quentin Johnston, but he is great for a prospect because of his size. But outside of that, I I can't really give him a whole lot he is going to have some upside of course and like I said the coaching that he lands with is going to be very major I'd like to see him catch with his hands more and he only had one touchdown last year in college but Quentin Johnson at number five for me Kayshawn is it Boutte or Booty? how do you say it I guess I, I thought it was Booty but there, I, mean, hey, well, I, could, I could be wrong I'm, I'm, don't ask me to pronounce anybody's name correctly that's usually <laughs> why I have Don he's my encyclopedia when it comes to that but yeah oh man me and you me and you gonna argue I can't believe you put QJ at number five. I did. Wow. I did, man. And this this class, I don't know. This class is weird, dude. It, it It is. But anyways, give me number four for you. All right. So number four for me, Um, really, I think three and four are kind of interchangeable. But I'm going to give uh, I'm going to put this guy at four just out of respect for the guy at three. I think it's Josh Downs from UNC, man. I, mm. I think he could be good. I think he is everything that people think Jalen Hiley will be. So really? I, I look at him last year. I think he did really well with Sam Howell. And I think him and Drake may, may have missed on some deep balls this year just because it's newer. But I'll tell you what, they hit on some of those deep passes that they missed. He might be number two on this list. I think he's got the speed. He killed my cane. So I've seen him play up close and personal. Yeah. He's just got a real smooth element to his game. And I don't think he's done growing. So I like him at four. He could easily be three in this class, though. And he's got Drake May throw, uh, throwing him, right? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that. You talk about Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs being what Jalen Hyatt should be. Jalen Hyatt is going to be my number four in this NFL draft. Absolute burner running a 4-4 flat. He was the Blitnikoff winner last year, which, of course, shows that. According to uh, the votes, he was the best wide receiver in the class. Six foot, 176 pounds. So you do like the height. Of course, he's not going to be that 6-3, 6-4 like Quentin Johnston. And and this is the major thing about this, you know, draft class for receivers. It does lack a lot of height. It does lack a lot of size, but you're going to get some nice speed and really technical receivers um, in this draft. Like I mentioned with Jalen Hyatt, he's a burner out of the SEC. I feel like he's actually really similar to Zay Flowers, just not as sharp with his movements, with his route running. I think my favorite thing about Jalen Hyatt, 
Jalen Hyatt, excuse me, is he's really good at alternating his speed on the routes to be kind of deceptive and create that separation in the open field. One concern that a lot of people are talking about, and it would I, I would have put him higher, um, is he's caught a ton of passes just wide open on busted coverages. And we've seen that sometimes with those receivers that are constantly catching open passes. Do they really have you know, what that 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 quality to them that when they get to the NFL, they're going to be able to separate from these DBs and being a smaller guy at six foot, 176 pounds is if a guy jams him up on the line, how's he going to be able to to necessarily react to that? But he does have a huge catch radius. His arms and hands are, are really always extended on his receptions, but he's not going to be a guy that's running a whole bunch of routes, a bunch of different routes. Rather, it's mostly going to be go routes, crossers, slants, working over in the middle of the field. Spent 87% of his time in the slot, so he's not going to be a whole lot on the outside. Not a lot of press coverage experience on his end as well. Um, so when you see him getting jammed at the line of scrimmage, potentially, again, with his size, not going to be a major surprise. And he does only have one elite year under his belt, which, of course, it was more than enough for him to win the Bolitnikoff. I really like Jalen Hyatt. Uh, excuse me, Jalen Hyatt. He can really turn on the burners, like I said, coming out of the SEC. And if he lands with the right team, he's going to be an amazing deep threat, I believe, in his rookie year. I'm, in, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Though. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you brought no, up some good. very good points that I was actually going to save for later. But since you put Jalen Hyatt on this list, let's talk about it. All the, all the things you just mentioned is my main concern with him. Tennessee yep. has the most gimmicky offense in the nation. They do. Like, I don't know who's good. Is, is Hendon Hooker good? <laughs> is he good or not? But I will say this. My rule of thumb with receivers when I'm picking the ones that I think are going to be good, because, you know, we think, oh, are guys fast? Are they big? Can they run routes? Can they catch? My thing that usually sticks is, can they beat press coverage and man? Yep. Like, that means you're a dog in the NFL. And the thing with Hyatt, you just said it. One, played majority of his snaps in the slot. Yep. And even more troublesome is, I think he played something like less than 40 career snaps where he actually was pressed. Yep. And when you look at like his numbers when he is pressed, they're horrible. Right. So... I want to know if this guy can, one, get off the line, because if he can't, all that speed doesn't matter. In the NFL, he's not going to be just running down the middle of the field right. wide open. So he's really got to show me that he can beat press and get open. You know, And I don't know if he can do that because Tennessee's offense just basically made him wide open every play. Yep. Yep. No, I know exactly what you mean. And, and that is a concern, you know. Receiver coming out of the SEC, you do like to see it, no doubt. But again, some of the things that you mentioned, and you you just want to see, again, more routes in his route tree. You want to see more than just the go routes or the slants or the crossers that he was running. And again, at 176 pounds, yeah, he runs a 4-4. But coming over the middle, I mean, he could get blown up. You know, I some of these was, receivers I like... he would be faster, too. I mean, I, I know people play faster, but do you think he could be Will Fuller? Because I think that's like the ceiling for him. If he can get with a quarterback... They can throw the deep ball like Deshaun was doing in Houston. Like, can he be Will Fuller? Man, you know, looking at Jalen Hyatt, he kind of feels like a faster Tyler Lockett, if I'm being honest with you. Like, he'll put his body on the line. He doesn't have the routes of Tyler Lockett yet, but in terms of being that short, medium, and deep receiver, I see that in Jalen Hyatt. Like you said, or really, like I said, one elite year, like you said, very gimmicky offense. He's he's going to have to grow, and that's another thing about this receiver class is maybe even outside of the first or second spot, it's a lot of potential. It's a lot of basic receivers in this draft, but they are talented nonetheless. So, Will Fuller, I, I'm going to go more of a maybe Tyler Lockett kind of play style, but nonetheless, it's it's going to be exciting to um to see Jalen Hyatt, excuse me, Jalen Hyatt. But give me your number three receiver in this draft, JT. I hate that I got to put him at number three because he's so smooth, man. This dude is nice, Jordan Addison, man. He did it. He did it in two different universities, man. Like he, he did. Put, on, put pit on the map. He was nice in the ACC. And then he hooked up with Caleb and Lincoln out west, and he just kept balling, balling, man. Yep. I I just think everything he does is nice, man. He's got enough speed to play in the NFL. You know he can catch. I mean, he's out there setting up dudes on routes, just like you know Devonta Smith would. Only thing I just want to see him is, you know, can he beat you know the press at NFL level? But I think he can, man. He's just crafty. He's nice. He's as NFL ready as it gets, man. I, I'm really confident in him, you know, being a starter from day one. And I like him at number three. Jordan Addison at number three. Yeah, he did have a um, a little bit of a rough combine. I remember after he went out for his first reps on the 40, I think, in, you know, his jumps and everything, he had like a, 
a sub five, like raw or or relative athletic score. It was really rough. And some people were like, Ooh, this is the day two pick, but I think you got to look in total at Jordan Addison and and he's going to be a little further up on my list. But like you said, you hate to put him at three. You can argue he's the best receiver in his class. When you look at consistency, like he is very smooth. He's very nice with the way he moves in and out of the field, but I don't want to get too much into it. We'll get into him in just a little bit. Number three for me and Zay flowers here at number three was very impressive when I got into his tape. Now he is very small, five, nine, 182 pounds, so he is going to be a little more stocky for being under five foot ten. He did put on 12 pounds for the combine, which is something that you do like to see. He had that commitment to at least showing up bigger for the scouts, and more than likely, you know, maybe he ran a little slower running at a four four two. Maybe you would have liked to see the mid four threes or higher four threes for a guy that you know isn't even five foot ten, five foot eleven. But when I look at Zay Flowers, I feel like a little Hollywood Brown, potentially Miko Hardman, but he's a lot more refined. His routes are really sharp. He's a one-play walking touchdown. I mean, realistically, you that you let Zay Flowers get into an open spot in this draft, or excuse me, open spot on the field. And a good bit of receivers in this draft can do this. They're going to immediately take off. Again, running at that 4-4-2. He played all four years in college. Big time playmaker after the catch, and he can high point the football as well at just five foot, uh, excuse me, five foot nine. Very good with his body control as well. He had to deal with a lot of bad passes at Boston College, not from the best quarterbacks out there. And I would I say, I didn't even know they had a quarterback at Boston College. They were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I was, I was watching tape, and the dude was like saying the quarterback's name, and I was like, I don't even know who that is. And then, and then I went to research it. I was like, Nah, we're we're here for Zay Flowers. It's all good. But playing four years in Boston College. Kind of reminds me of that Miko Hardman, small, shifty, very quick guy, but but the routes are actually there. And that was a big knock off Miko Hardman coming out of Georgia. And I think why he never really found success with the Chiefs. And hopefully, I feel like the Jets could really put him to use. He wasn't gripping plays well enough, is what I heard. He wasn't running his routes well enough. Um, but again, Zay Flowers at a 4 4 2. I think he's going to look really good here in the NFL. The only cons are his size, and he can be a little drop happy at times. I think he had almost 10 drops year before last. So not something that you necessarily want to see. But let's really get into the nitty-gritty, man. He'll clean it up, though, because we thought the same thing about Jamar Chase. And I I will say this. I'll give you There was a lot of concerns about Jamar Chase Yeah, we we thought he was going to be an all-time bust because he couldn't (laughs) catch in camp, and then now he's he's, he's blazing everyone. But Arguably the best receiver in the league. I like the Zay Flowers pick because he reminds me of another guy that when he came into the league, I was like, what? And then now he's just nasty. And I think if Zay Flowers gets with the right quarterback, I see like um like Deontay Johnson in him. Like just yeah. real smooth, can run yeah. great routes. And like if if he's with a good quarterback, I think the drops will be less and less. And then we'll look at him like, wow, what why wasn't he drafted higher? Yep. To me, Jalen Hyatt and and Zay Flowers are really the same. Jalen Hyatt only had that one major year. You you go look at all four years of Zay Flowers' numbers, pretty solid, stayed in Boston College all four years. Um, And I think it really helped his draft stock, the the fact that that he played his entire time in college too. But he's just a little more refined, a little sharper, a little more twitchy than Jalen Hyatt. But, I mean, you you take either one of them in the draft, you're going to be happy. But let's give the people what they really want. Give me your number two. We get into the top two receivers here. In the 2023 NFL draft on the NFL with AJL episode 19. Give it to me. Man, why are you making me do this? I hate I hate this pick, but <laughs> I'm only putting this guy at number two because I don't want to look stupid, so I'm hedging my bets. But I'm 50-50 on this guy, and it's uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. I'm not why, he, why he is at number two? Simply put, he's five-star recruit with Ohio State. He's got the pedigree, but... A guy who I trust his analysis when it comes to receivers very, very much said one word, playmaker, and that's Steve Smith. And Steve Smith knows receivers. Yep. So I think if Love Steve Smith sees it. something in him, man, I got to look I gotta look at the same thing. So that's why he's at number two. But the reason why I'm hesitating being as high on him at number two is, like, what's his upside? Like, yeah. I mean, he was scared to run the 40. He really had that one big year, which is two years ago. And look at the yep. talent that he was surrounded by. I mean, Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison, who if you go to Ohio State's pro day, everybody was there just to see him. Like, yep, he's playing with so much talent. It's Ohio State. We've seen this before. Yep. And what's his upside? Because if it's Keenan Allen, I don't think he's the number two receiver in this draft because nobody is going back to take Keenan Allen in the first round. But I'm banking on Steve Smith saying he's the number one guy to at least put him up at number two. Yeah. Yeah, I. 
I thought JSN was number one until I watched the tape. And I actually had to watch a few different film studies of JSN to actually get a full grip on him. Um, there was something you just said that that I was about to pick up on. But nonetheless, JSN is my number two as well. Coming in at 6'1", 196 pounds, ran a 4.52. My concern with him is he did have that hamstring injury last year, which is concerning. He only had that one big year at Ohio State. It was a major year. I want to say it was a... Uh, ACC record from 20 plus years or not ACC. Um, maybe I'm 10, thinking yeah. Of a, yeah, I think it might've been a big 10 record for yards. Um, I think he set an Ohio state record and, you know, next to Chris Olave, next to Garrett Wilson in those couple of years, he absolutely ran away from the competition. He had that 350 yard game just about in the Rose bowl, him and CJ Stroud showing out in y'all gonna laugh at me because I'm wearing a Saints jersey or wearing a hoodie and I have a Saints jersey right here. JSN reminds me a little bit of Michael Thomas. Coming out of Ohio State, sharp route runner. He understands the depths of the zone coverage. He can sit down there in those routes. He's got great hands. He can break almost any defender with his routes as well. And just like I was mentioning earlier, I think it might have been with Jalen Hyatt. I think his upside could be like a better Tyler Lockett. You can see the twitchiness in him. He's going to be a better route runner. I can see the Keenan Allen comps because of how sharp JSN is, but I think JSN's best trait is is that he can be used at multiple levels of the field, but he's really going to understand how to sit down in coverage. Being 6'1", 196 pounds, he's more than likely going to play a lot of that time in the slot, but he can turn up that speed really across the middle of the field. He can track the ball over his shoulder. He's got a potential for a lot of yak in his um you know in his bag as well and he's not afraid to block as a receiver but again only a one lead, only one elite year it was a major year don't get me wrong but when you have a receiver that's that small with a hamstring injury it's going to cause concerns nonetheless but so, so here's what it comes down to though go ahead can JSN play on the outside cuz that's the that's the main concern with me is the only I receiver think, in this draft that can play really on the outside guy. I think is Anderson uh Addison and Johnson bro Johnston excuse me to be honest with you, I think those are the only receivers that can realistically play on the outside in this draft. And I will say one more thing while I was hesitant to put him at number two. You forget, you go back to last summer. What were the rumors that were coming out about JSN? Is that scouts in the NFL, they don't think he's an elite first round talent. And I started right. hearing names like Rashad Bateman. That's who they think he like, reminds <laughs> them of. And I'm like, Wait a minute, this kid was supposed to be a superstar yeah. at Ohio State. And it's like if yeah. NFL scouts a year ago are saying he's not an elite prospect, right? And I'm then I'm really confused on how I should feel about him. Yeah. JSN would be higher if he had a stat line of like Jordan Addison or if he maybe won the Bolitnikoff one year. Like some people might come in here and say, Oh, I would take Jalen Hyatt over JSN because Hyatt, you know, might have maybe uh, you know, a Bolitnikoff winner. And, and of course he ran faster and, you know, the way he's built and everything. But JSN, what he really has going for him is he's got either for either the first or second best skill set in terms of like overall complete receiver. If he was as big as Quentin Johnson, he'd be the runaway wide receiver one. Or if he had at least two years of solid production, because his freshman year, he had like no production goes off in 2021 with um, you know, CJ Stroud, and then last year I think he has five catches for like 50 yards. You know, so yeah, the hamstring I mean, really yeah, the bothers injuries. him. Yeah, I get with the injuries, but it's just you know, yep. like what's his upside? Because if it's a right. slot guy, I mean, I gotta put him further down on my list. Yep. Yep. And that's why I said the receiver really the receiver position here in the draft really lacks size. Most of your guys are coming in like six foot or just a little under, but your number one wide receiver in the 2023 NFL draft. Let me hear it. You know, you know, you're my guy, right? And I almost walked off set when you disrespected this man like this. <laughs> I know who it is, then. <laughs> man, it's QJ, man. Come on, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit my bias. I've been, he's been, he's been my number one receiver for the past two years. Like I've, I've watched him. I think he's really talented. Does he have some concerns? Absolutely. But we just went through a whole list of guys that have things that concern us. So here's the thing: we talked about this already. My major thing that translates to the NFL is how you do against press. Like that trumps everything because yep. we because we always put up these these concerns about guys like, oh, when uh, when Jamar Chase came out, he's not a burner. He can't catch Justin Jefferson. Last time I checked, people weren't that high on him when he came out. Nope. T Higgins, they're like, uh, you know, but it come when it comes down to it is can you beat press? And yep. guess who is the best receiver against press the past three years in college football? It's Quinn Johnston. Yeah, like you throw in all the other physical tools that he has. He's tall. He's fast. He's athletic. 
And it's not just like a one trick pony where he's just running down the field. The dude is like short area, quick athletic. Like he is one of the top accelerators in this draft. Yeah. And you probably don't notice because he is so big. Like he's huge. Like this is as close to an alpha as you're going to get in this draft. Like yeah. we're talking about, I'm not saying he is Jamar Chase, but when you're looking for those, those next level generational wide receiver ones, like yeah. this guy has it. And yeah. All he needs to do is get with a quarterback that knows what they're doing, get with the offensive coordinator that knows what they're doing. Right. And this guy is going to be the next star wide receiver. Like it's him by a mile. And then you fall off a cliff mm. and then there's all these other receivers. It's QJ. Damn him by a mile. I, I hear what you're saying too, because when, and here's the reason that I was okay with putting him further down the list, because I feel like when you look at the NFL right now, outside of your bigger guys, like Devonte Adams, your Tyree kills, your Justin Jefferson's, your Jamar chases, your Cooper cups. They're not big guys. You know, they're guys that can play on the slot also play on the outside, but absolutely dominate. And when I just look at the skill set of all the receivers that I named off ahead of QJ, that's where I get comfortable with putting him down there. But again, like you said, if, if he's to you far and behold, the best one in the draft and he pops, I've seen the skill set on the tape. So I wouldn't be shocked, but um, you know, I just, I, I personally wanted to see a little more when I turn on the tape, but I, I'm not going to be mad at you for putting him at number one. Number one for me, shockingly, it was JSN for a while, but now that I've went through the tape, got my rankings down, it's going to be Jordan Addison at number one. Kenneth Spradlin said it earlier in the comments. He's his one based off the pit year alone, winning the Bolitnikoff in 2021, going insanely berserk in the year with Kenny Pickett. Of course, that really helps Kenny Pickett's draft stock. Jordan Addison, though, at 5'11", 173 pounds. He really reminds me of a lighter Stefan Diggs, mix in a little bit of maybe that Devontae Smith going to be that smaller receiver but the way he can have his release around the outside it looks really good when he runs a wheel route when he runs a go route he can hit you with the slant the crossers he's going to be that receiver that fits into those multiple positions on the NFL but it's weird because he tested poorly at the combine he doesn't really have the best measurables but he plays like a hell of a receiver very very sharp route runner he really has that easy separation and knowing that he entered the transfer portal from Pitt going to USC, having the Heisman winner throw to him. like There was just so much that really could have happened and potentially went wrong with him. I, I'm, I'm sure you wonder, oh, how with, with Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley. With him and Lincoln Riley, happened. right? <laughs> right, yeah, with, with everything happening. And, and some would say, oh, I, I wanted to see more out of Jordan Addison. I still think he could be a day two pick. When you look at his numbers overall, I mean, like Ken said, just from the 2021 year alone at Pitt from Kenny Pickett, absolutely berserk. But I'm going to put Jordan Addison at number one. And and it was nice because, the you know, the first thing I really thought of when I turned on the tape, I was like, this guy kind of feels like Stefan Diggs a little bit, like not going to absolutely burn you, but he's very technical, very good with the fo footwork. Really, there's a lot of moves in his bag that he can use, whether it's the release, whether it's sitting down in zone. Um, but again, you're going to want to see him in that press coverage. How is he going to be when you get those guys that are like the Jalen Ramseys, the Sauce Garners, the Trayvon Diggs, the real chippy cornerbacks in the league that are going to push you off the line of scrimmage? What's going to happen with that? But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the top five wide receivers in the 2023 NFL draft. I've got Jordan Addison, one, JSN, two, Zay Flowers, three, Jalen Hyatt, four, and JT wants to walk off the set with QJ at five. Run through yours again real quick, man, for the folks. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I had Kayshawn Booty at five, Josh Downs at four, Addison at three, man. JSN at two, and then Quentin Johnston, the GOAT, at one. Quentin Johnston, he made sure he made sure to let me know. Quentin Johnston, the GOAT at number one. 